Outside of there, on the, the outside of there. Yeah. Yeah, that's not there. That's not there. Maybe uh, three half an inch. Half an inch. a eulogy in the wealth invocation for the benefit of our Dharma centers and the entire world. And then after the ceremony is finished, we're going to take the kudu and place it on this um, platform here. And then the ballast, which is all of the rocks, are going to be added to it, which will allow the kudu to go down in the ocean. And then we will finish sewing the top of the shroud together. And then once that's together, we're going to play music. And while the music is playing, the kudum will be lowered into the water. And then at that moment, also the salt um, that was brought in the back is going to be put overboard in the back. Um, and the che will descend to the Nava realm. Okay. And we have rose petals we can throw at that time. Please don't throw your katas in the water. Thank you. So today is a very special day. It is the 10th day of Sagadawa, and as Guru Rinpoche is Duchen, it marks the occasion of Padmasambhava and Princess Mandarama <coughs> being sentenced by the king of Odiana to be burned alive due to the negative ministers in his entourage. This event turned into the miracle of Guru Yabhyu rising above the flames and transforming the pyre into a lake of water where they appeared on a lotus. They were then enthroned to rule the kingdom and brought countless subjects to spiritual maturity and liberation. When I first met Galta Rinpoche, he pulled out an applique tanka of Guru Rinpoche that he had managed to smuggle out from Tibet. Later, he gave this to me as a thank you gesture. Rinpoche's devotion to the second Buddha, Padmasambhava, rivaled that of his devotion to the Buddha himself. And to that end, he dedicated his life in service to the lineage and legacy of Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism that was brought to Tibet by the Indian saint, Guru Rinpoche Padmasambhava. It's not surprising that it turns out that Rinpoche's funeral services are being held on this, the extremely holy day of invoking the blessings of Padmasambhava, and that this date and this funeral were not chosen based on planning, it just came about. Today we find ourselves out here in the ocean because Rinpoche insisted that his body be deposited into this great body of water as an offering to the creatures that live within it. The relative plane of existence, as we know, is based on conditioned phenomena. It comes about temporarily due to root causes and contributing circumstances, all of which are based on the interdependency of all that lives and breathes. To dedicate the human remains of Rinpoche's Nirmanakaya rebirth in this way is an act of great altruism occurring without fanfare or elaborate ritual and given as a gift to the fish and nagas who inhabit the subterranean depths of the sea to ensure connections for future lifetimes so that they too 
who meet the Dharma and find their way to salvation. Rinpoche joked that Rinpoche was simply wanting his body tossed into the ocean to repay the fish that Rinpoche had eagerly enjoyed in the form of sashimi at many Japanese restaurants during Rinpoche's life. In truth, Rinpoche's remains will make this connection to the path that leads to liberation for immeasurable creatures who reside in the immeasurable depths of the oceans that interlink and encircle this planet Earth. This is the way that Rinpoche himself chose to share his relics with the subterranean world, as he was actually very fond of the ocean. And he was also very aware of its dangers, of which he himself had several close encounters. The ocean is also an important metaphor in Buddhist literature, including Mahasandhi, where the ocean is depicted as the ground of being, Dharmakaya, and the waves that emerge from it as the unobstructed power of its own potential to respond to the endless needs of suffering sentient beings, or Rupakaya. The ocean and the ocean's waves are ultimately one and the same, and merely manifest in various ways according to the perceptions of others. Today, as we offer the sacred relic of Rinpoche's Nirmanakaya into the ocean, we can imagine the inseparable essence of this manifestation, not just only being offered, but also merging and dissolving now back into its source, the original ground of Dharmakaya, the resting place of all the Buddhas. Among environments on our planet, the ocean is the largest, occupying 139 million square miles, or 361 million square kilometers that cover 61% of the Northern Hemisphere and 81% of the Southern Hemisphere. Rinpoche left many supports of the doctrine in the Triple Gem, as Rinpoche graced us on the earth with his presence. But now in his passing from the corporeal body, Rinpoche also dedicated his body as an offering to the creatures of this vast ocean, so that this great body of water, home to billions of living beings, will also connect to the sacred timeless truth of the Holy Dharma on both a molecular and ethereal level. In the Sutra of Inexhaustible Knowledge, it states, just like when a single drop of water falls into the great ocean, until the ocean itself is exhausted, that drop of water will never be wasted. Like that, the dedication of virtue to bring all beings to the state of enlightenment is the virtue that will never be exhausted until all beings are fully awakened. Rinpoche, in his unprecedented humility, also knew that his human remains carry blessing through contact, and yet in the guise of disposing his body in the ocean, he is able to fulfill his aim without any personal promotion. This is in keeping with Rinpoche's style his entire life, a very long life, and once again serves as one of the final teachings Rinpoche bestows upon us, which is to always conceal one's qualities and to openly expose one's faults. To not look for recognition through worldly concerns, but rather to be an example of the true Dharma practitioner through one's humility, pure conduct, and noble human qualities. Rinpoche often used the words yarap and marap, meaning noble and ignoble. He would call us out if we were marap. He would yell it out, marap. <laughs> Whenever our ego was on display, 
He rarely called us Yarap, which means noble, because we weren't. Because he rarely promoted any notion of ego gratification in his disciples. Thank goodness for this master, who was willing to risk it all just to try to help his disciples and friends somehow make the shift from self-obsession to selfless service. Due to Rinpoche's kindness, I and countless others have been able to meet the greatest teachers, serve them directly, and receive their empowerments, transmissions, instructions, and blessings. Due to this, we are not lacking, lacking in blessings, and we are not lacking in instructions, but we may be lacking in application. Today we promise you, Rinpoche, that we will try harder to always be worthy of what you've given us by choosing to dedicate your Nirmanakaya to this new and foreign life in the West. You were a true pioneer, and you really became one of us in all ways. So that you could relate to us, and so that you could shape us into what we have become in terms of spiritual development. Now you leave us with the many responsibilities to be worthy vessels of your many gifts. How can we represent you going forward? How can we please you the most? By following your example and never forgetting your hard advice that was repeated to us over and over again. Prayer of Excellent Conduct, it states, May I purify oceans of realms, liberate oceans of beings, behold oceans of dharma, realize oceans of wisdom, purify oceans of conduct, perfect o oceans of aspiration prayers, make offerings to oceans of Buddhas, and act without weariness throughout oceans of Kalpas. shower of blessings will be the nourishment we need to make our way out of this ocean of samsara once and for all. Once we are out, then we can truly fulfill the aim of benefit for others, just like you have done. We commit ourselves to the Bodhisattva vow to never be weary or tired when it comes to bringing benefit and eventual liberation to all beings without bias so that one day we can all be free from adventitious confusion. Lama Ken, Lama Ken, Lama Ken. And let's all recite Rinpoche's favorite dedication prayer. Nanke tatu tai senja <clears throat> now, in order to prepare for the practice, um, those of you with musical instruments, could you please just be ready, have them out and ready? Um, those of you who will be offering salt into the water a little bit later, if you could just kind of move to the back of the boat so you're already in position, that would be great. Um, and. The lamas, maybe come here. Maybe all the lamas could come here by the kudu.
Thank you. 